Okay. We all found lesson 3.5 in our notes, right? Substitution. Notice, this is a lot like the problems we did last week, isn't it? Okay. Where there's three equations, three variables. I'm teaching substitution today. Last week I taught elimination. After we get past today, it's your choice. Do you like elimination? Do you like substitution? I don't care either way what you use. Um, and it, it could just be you look at the type of problem and decide, oh, this one looks more like substitution to me. This one looks more like elimination. If you decide after today you don't like substitution, you want to go back and only use elimination on these, that's your call. Okay? Now, we're going to start, have a very similar process um, as an overall. It's just parts of it are going to be different. If you recall last week, first thing I always did is I numbered them, numbered them right? So these equations are going to be 1, 2, and 3. And that's, by, that's me be trying to be organized is what it is. Me trying to be organized, trying to keep you organized. Now, okay, go back to substitution in your brains when we have one or two equations, right? Or excuse me, said that wrong. When we have two equations. What did we have to do for substitution when we had two equations? What was our first step? Pick one equation and solve it for either x or y. So today, we don't have two equations, though. We have three equations. Pick one equation and solve it for x y or z you pick okay so start looking at that and deciding what one sounds good and i'm just going to write myself a note here solve one equation for x y or z Okay, that's kind of your main first step here, is to solve one equation for x, y, or z. Write that down, and then think to yourself, which equation looks good to you to solve for either x, y, or z? Y number two. Okay, it's already a 1x, isn't it? Whether it be 1x, 1y, 1z, it's a 1x. So, I agree. Let's try and solve equation 2. So, I'm going to write this down as x plus 5y equals 9. How do I solve this for x? In other words, how do I get x by itself? Okay, if it's x plus 5y, we want to subtract 5y. If I subtract 5y on one side, we subtract 5y on the other side, right? So then I'm going to have x equals, what do you want to put there? Negative 5y plus 9, or 9 minus 5y. Okay, and I'm happy with either option that Gabe said there. Okay, whether you say negative 5y plus 9 or 9 minus 5y, I'm both with good. And did I say that backwards? You, said I'm both good. you know what I meant. I am very good at mixing up my words and not even realizing that I said it backwards. So, see, you went right backwards with me. Okay. Um, anyways, I am fine with either option. If we were going to graph and wanting y equals mx plus b, then I would say, okay, let's definitely do negative 5y plus 9. For what we're doing, either or is fine. Now, my morning class, some of them wanted that negative 5y plus 9. Some of them thought it looked nicer with 9 minus 5y because you don't have the negative out front. So we'll go ahead and do 9 minus 5y on this one. Okay. So we have picked one equation. In this particular example, is equation 2, and we solved it for x. Okay. Think back to two equations. 
Once we solve one equation for x or y, what did we have to do with it? Plug it in. Plug it back into the other equation, right? Okay. Well, on this one, we picked 2. We solved it for x. Now, we have to take turns. We have to plug it back into both of the other equations. And that's how we're going to get, those of you that were here last year, last week, or you've watched the video, you remember equations 4 and 5? That's how we're going to get equations 4 and 5. So I'm going to start with equation 1, if you will. I'm going to write equation 1 right here, which is 2x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 1. Every place I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 9 minus 5y. Every place I see an x, I'm replacing it with what x equals, which is 9 minus 5y. So let's write this out. So instead of 2x, I'm going to write 2 times 9 minus 5y. And then the rest of the equation is going to stay the same. So we still have plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 1. From here, it's equation solving. Okay? So, what do we do first? Distribute. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 2 times 5y. So, minus 10y plus 3y minus 2z equals negative 1. Okay. Clean up. Yeah, do we see some like terms here that we can put together? Yeah. There's minus 10y plus 3y. And minus 10y plus 3y is... Minus 7y, so I have 18 minus 7y minus 2z equals negative 1. Your final goal would basically be like standard form. Basically, I would say get your variables on one side, constants or numbers on the other side. So in this case, I've got my y and z over here, don't I? How do I move the 18? Since it's a positive 18, we're going to subtract 18. If we subtract 18 from one side, subtract 18 from the other side. So 18's cancel, and I have negative 7y minus 2z equals negative 19. I'm going to call this equation 4. Okay. I'm going to call that equation 4. In order to get equation 4, I took my x equals and I subbed it into equation 1 or into one of the equations. Now we need to repeat the process, except this time x equals 9 minus 5y goes into which equation now? Equation 3. It is equation 2, so we can't put it into equation 2. We're going to go into equation 3. So let me write out equation 3. 4z minus 5x equals 4. Every place I see an x, we're going to replace it with 9 minus 5y. So 
4z minus 5 times, what's x? 9 minus 5y in parentheses equals 4. Do the math, right? I see parentheses again, so we should distribute. What is it that I'm distributing? It's what kind of 5? A negative 5, right? So just beware. So negative 5 times 9 minus 45 minus 5 times minus 5y is plus 25y equals 4. Clean it up. I don't have any like terms this time, but I can keep my z and y on the left. But in order to move the minus 45, we're going to add 45. So 4z plus 25y equals 49. One thought. When I go to my next step, I have to put, be able to put these two equations together, right? Equation 4 is negative 7y minus 2z equals negative 19. Notice what's the order. Y, Z. What would it be best to do here then? Y, Z. So I would encourage you to flip them and then instead say 25Y plus 4Z equals 19. And that I'm just trying to set us up for the next step. Ah, did I say 19? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, yes, 49, definitely. Thank you. These are exactly where our careless mistakes come in, aren't they? Because had we not caught, had Lily not caught that for me, I would have not known something was wrong eventually, but it would have taken me a bit. Okay, what is this? What am I going to call that? That is equation five. Okay. Now, this is where we go back to what we were doing last week. We have an equation four. We have an equation five. Let's put them together. So equation four was negative 7y minus 2z equals negative 19. Equation 5 was 25y plus 4z equals 49. I don't know if it's good or bad. I think it's good, but I don't use substitution from here on out unless I just think it fits the, you know, fits the problem. To me, as I look at these two equations, I don't feel the need to substitute. This is more of an elimination thing, too. Okay, so what would you like to eliminate? Y's or Z's? What would you guys say? Z's? Yeah, now that I look at it, I really don't want to get 7y and 25y to be the same. Because that puts me in big numbers, doesn't it? So, how do I get my z's? Multiply negative 2 by 2. Okay, yeah. I already have my z's. I already have a minus and a plus. So I already have opposite signs. And I have a 2z and a 4z. How do we get those to be the same numbers? We multiply that top equation by 2. We're going to multiply the whole equation there. So top equation, multiply it by 2, I get negative 14y minus 4z equals negative 38. Oof, I made it, barely. Bottom equation is going to stay as is. 25y plus 4z equals 49. 
Okay. What do you notice about the four z's? I have a minus four z and a plus four z, so opposite signs tell me to add. Which is remember what I like to try and get is I like to try and get those opposite signs. Negative 14y plus 25y is 11y. Minus 4z plus 4z. Zero. It's gone. Negative 38 plus 49. 11. Sounds like good news to me. 11y equals 11. I'm going to... Divide by 11, and y is 1. Am I done? No, we got our first answer. We have to find the other two, but they're not too bad in comparison. Okay, thoughts. What can I do with that y equals 1? Okay, one option, and it's in this particular problem, but we can put it back into equation two, which is also this x equals 9 minus 5y. We can put it right in there. Now, I can't guarantee that will always work. What will always work, though, would be going back and using equations four or five. Okay, those would always work. But, I personally, I agree, I like equation two better in this situation too. Okay, so you find an equation that has only two variables that you can plug it back into. So, if we use equation two, which if you remember the solved equation, is x equals 9 minus 5y. But, give me a moment, but yes. So 9 minus 5 times 1, 5 times 1 is 5, and so yes, I agree with Gabe, x equals 4. So would you take those two and plug them in the mm. Yep. Now you're going back, well normally we say into 1, 2, or 3. In this case, number 2 won't work, because what is it I still have to find? Z, and number 2 has... No Z. So you have to watch out for those special cases. But general rule of thumb is go back to four or five first and then go back to one, two, or three. Sometimes there's other little things you can do. Okay, one, two, or three. What are you guys using? I personally would have used three just because there's one less variable. But I had people in my morning class said one, the numbers look better. I'm going to go three. Meet me. Let's see if we get the same answer. 3 is 4z minus 5x equals 4. So I don't know z. 4z minus 5 times 4 equals 4. 5 times 4 is 20. So 4z minus 20 equals 4. If it's 4z minus 20, I'm going to add 20. 4z equals 24. Divide by 4, and z is 6. I really ran into the next problem a little bit. It was not my intent. How do I write my final answer? Okay. Four, comma one, comma six. Remember I'm looking for an ordered triple. Alphabetical order. So X, Y, Z. Four, one, six.
Okay. So that's your first run through substitution. Shall we try the second one? I'm going to go through the second one. Give everyone a chance to try and figure it out. Let's go straight to Some of you could probably handle that. Some of you, not so much. Some people would not be quite ready for that. Okay. So this is the second example on the page. I'm going to call my equations. One, two, three. What do I do first? Are you trying to see my answer key? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see him like peering up over there. Okay, so if you say take 3 and subtract 2z, trying to solve equation 3 for x, I think that's a good plan. It's a 1x, right? My question would be, why would you guys suggest, I guess maybe I should say Doug in this case, but I'm guessing there's some other ingredients here. Why would you guys su suggest solving 3 for x instead of 2? Yeah, 3 is a little bit smaller equation, isn't it? It doesn't have all the pieces, it just has the one extra piece. So, I agree. So if I take 3, x plus 2z equals negative 8. So we picked an equation, we're going to solve it in this case for x. So if it's x plus 2z, minus 2z. x equals... negative 8 minus 2z, or you can reverse this one also, right? I'm going to reverse this one just because there's negatives both ways, so negative 2z minus 8. Okay. What do I do with this x equals negative 2z minus 8? Okay, plug it into the other two equations, right? We have to take our turns with both. So I'm going to go with equation 1 first of all. So equation 1 is 2x minus y plus z equals negative 2. Every place I see an x, I'm going to replace it with Negative 2z minus 8. Okay, so start plugging that in. Stay a step ahead of me if you can. 2 times x, so 2 times negative 2z minus 8. Still minus y, still plus z equals negative 2. You see parentheses, so you know we need to... Distribute, multiply. So 2 times negative 2z, negative 4z. 2 times minus 8, minus 16. Still minus y, still plus z, still equals negative 2. This is a perfect example of a problem of why I put a little mark through my z's. Otherwise, Z's and 2's can really quickly become the same. So. Okay. Thoughts? Okay. We want to have all of our numbers to the right. So add 16 to both sides needs to happen. If it's minus 16, add 16. So I still have negative 4Z minus Y plus z equals negative 2 plus 16 is 14. 
And what else am I going to recommend we do? Yeah, combine those like terms. Negative 4z plus z. So negative 4 plus 1. Negative 3z still minus y equals 14. What am I going to call this? Equation 4. Equation four. Now, I will say, and I'm fine with calling this equation 4. Notice the one thing it's not is it's not in alphabetical order, right? And I'm fine with that. Just realize when we get to equation 5, eventually we want to make sure they're in the same order. So that could mean, you know, you're going to have to switch one of them. Um, if we wanted to switch here, we could say that this is negative y minus 3z equals 14. But you don't have to switch right here. Okay? You can kind of wait and see what happens and decide later. Okay. I think he's starting to do math for us. Oh no, that bug needs to go away because I'm tired of him being in my room. Is that what is that where the mark came from? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I thought maybe I made a mark and the bug just happened to be on it, but <laughs> Whew, okay. Refocus. So we solved this equation three for x. We substituted into one. We got an equation four. Now what? Solve equation two. Okay. So now we're gonna solve equation two. Equation two is x plus 3y minus z equals 10. Every place I see an x, we're going to replace it with the negative 2z minus 8. So write it out. Negative 2z minus 8 is x, still plus 3y, still minus z, equals 10. Okay, now what? Nothing. What can I clean up here on the left? Z's. Z's. I've got a negative 2z and a minus z, which is going to be negative 3z. We still have minus 8 plus 3y equals 10. And we need to get those constants over to the other side, right? So we've got z's and y's. We're going to keep those to move the minus 8. We are adding 8. Negative 3z plus 3y equals 18. And this is equation 5. Now, compare with equation 4. Did we end up the same? Z's and Y's? Z's and Y's, right? If you'd prefer to have it alphabetical, you could always make it 3Y minus 3Z equals 18. Doesn't matter as long as what has to happen in the next step. Y's over Y's, Z's over Z's, right? So let's try that next step. Equation 4, negative 3z minus y equals 14. Equation 5, negative 3z 
plus 3y equals 18. All I did was rewrite equations 4 and 5 there. Thoughts? What would you guys like to do? Multiply 4 by negative 1. Multiply 4 by negative 1. And what is your goal here then? Z. Okay, eliminate Z's. We've got negative 3Z, negative 3Z, right? They're both Z's, they're both 3's. They're also both negatives. Life works a little bit better if we have opposite signs. So if I multiply one of them, and it doesn't really matter which one, by a negative. Then, top equation becomes, instead of negative 3z, it's positive 3z. Instead of minus y, it's plus y. Instead of equaling 14, it equals negative 14. Bottom equation, I'm just going to keep the same. Negative 3z plus 3y equals 18. 3z's have opposite signs. Opposite signs tell me to add 3z plus negative 3z. Cancels, right? y plus 3y. 4y. Negative 14 plus 18. Negative 14 plus 18 is 4. If 4y equals 4, then I can divide by 4. And y is 1. And that is the first answer. Good news is it doesn't take us nearly as long to find the other two answers, right? Otherwise, it'd be really time-consuming. Okay. If y equals 1, now what? Last time we went back and used the equation we'd solved. This time we can't because it's x's and z's. And we only have a y. So I have to use something that has a y and other, other, another variable. So this is where I'm going to always say go back to four. 4 or 5. Your pick. Whichever one looks better to you. Is Gabe saying 4 back there? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. So negative 3z. Minus y equals 14. Every place I see a y, it becomes a 1. Negative 3z minus 1 equals 14. If it's negative 3z minus 1, I'm going to add 1. Negative 3z equals 15. Divide by negative 3. And 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. Am I done? No. It was a lot quicker to find the second answer, wasn't it? So I have y, I have z. What else do I need? x. What are options for finding x? Okay. Officially, my options are usually two. one, two, or three, right? I know what I like. What about using this version of three that we solved for? Okay, that's my preference. However, any version of one, two, or three will work. And so, what I've been doing is using three, which says x equals negative 2z minus 8, that solved version over there. So x equals negative 2 times negative 5 minus 8. 
Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10 minus 8, and 10 minus 8 is 2. Final answer. Okay. If you go alphabetical, 2, 1, negative 5. Are we getting the hang of it? It is a lot of work. I know. Okay. Um, this is where I ended up ending in my morning class. I really was supposed to do one more, and that was I was going to do the word problem at the top of the next page. I say we can talk about at least how to set it up, which if you can get the setup part, it's not horrible. Okay, so let's go to the next page here. Let's look at this clothing store problem. Okay, see if we can get the setup. You manage a clothing store and you budget $6,000 to restock 200 shirts. You can buy t-shirts for $12 each, polo shirts for $24 each, and rugby shirts for $36 each. If you want to have twice as many rugby shirts as polo shirts, how many of each shirts do you buy? Realize the first thing I want you to do is to write some equations, right? Okay. What is it we need variables for? Polo shirts and rugby shirts. And? Oh, t-shirts. Yeah. So we, there's three different t-shirts or types of shirts we're buying. T-shirts, which I'm going to, you can use XYZ if you want. I'm using T for t-shirts. We're going to need to buy polo shirts, which I'm going to use P. And we're going to need to buy rugby shirts, which I'm going to use R. Okay? So there's my variables. Now, if I go back and reread that first statement. You manage a clothing store and budget $6,000 and restock to restock 200 shirts. Right there are some equations I can make. Because I can write an equation where my equation equals $6,000. That's a total that we can use. I can also write an equation that equals 200. That's a total that I can use. So, think about the equation that equals 6,000. It's $6,000, right? That $6,000 is to restock all these shirts. So what types of shirts are we restocking? Um, t-shirt, polo, rugby. Okay, t-shirts. Well, what do we know about t-shirts? To restock t-shirts, it's going to be 12, each. 12, and that is supposed to be a dollar sign there, sorry. $12 each, right? So how can I express that? 12T. Plus, I also need to restock polo shirts. How much is it going to cost to restock polo shirts? 24 each. How many? We don't know, so we're going to say 24P. Plus, we also need to restock rugby shirts. What's it tell us about rugby shirts? $36 each. How many? R. Dang it. Thought I had time. Notice, on this problem, it equaled money. We used money. One real other real quick. If it equals 200 shirts, guess what? T plus P plus R equals 200. And then the other one has to do with the how many or... Uh, twice as many rugby shirts as polo shirts. And that's the other one that you would use. Okay? So do the homework for tonight, please. Okay? If there's a word problem, we can definitely talk about it tomorrow. But yes, do the homework for tomorrow. Got it? That last equation would be R equals 2P.
because if you want twice as many rugby shirts as polo shirts, you want more rugby than polo. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. You too. Try that homework for tomorrow, folks. Oh.